All right, so question number 12, our very last one for this review. We've got a strange function. Um, you wouldn't need to know what it looks like uh, before you did the mathematics on it, but I just thought it was kind of cool. Wow, it's a, yeah, like, a, like a roller coaster with a loop-de-loop. -loop. And I'm asking in this problem um, where we would have a place where there's a vertical tangent. So I want to put, know this place over here where there's a vertical tangent and over here where there's a vertical tangent, which is really interesting because at this spot, you're going to notice that it's horizontal as you pass zero, zero this way, but it's also vertical as you pass zero, zero coming the other way. So foreshadowing, I think we're going to know that zero is going to be a place where there's a vertical tangent, as it turns out also a horizontal tangent because it is not a function. So anyway, let's go ahead and go through the mathematics and see what we can do. And I think we'll find that this is a, not as hard of a problem as the previous one on number 11. So here we go. We're going to start with our little implicit derivative, 3x squared plus 3y squared dy dx. And now is where we got to be really careful. This is where the mistake is going to happen. Remember, I want to think of this negative 6x as f and that part as g. So I need to do f prime g plus g prime f. And of course, the derivative of 0 is 0. No big deal. Let's see. Maybe I should move this that thing down a little bit. So again, the first thing I need to do is find dy dx. So dy dx would be a factor of these two pieces right here. There'd be a 3y squared attached to this portion and a negative 6x attached to that portion. So a 3y squared minus 6x. And I'm going to move these other two pieces to the other side as a positive 6y and a negative 3x squared. So I end up with a numerator and a denominator that are, <laughs> they look awfully similar, don't they? they? They just look like they switched places. So keep in mind, there's two ways I could ask the question. I could ask, where is the slope horizontal? Well, that would be where the numerator is zero. Or I could ask where uh, the slope is vertical, and that would be where the denominator equals zero. So I want to know when is the denominator zero, because that's where the slope would be undefined. So I want to know where is the denominator zero. Well. By doing a very, very little bit of math, I could find out that x itself, if we divided both sides by 6, is 1 half y squared. Well, that didn't really do everything that I needed. That just gave me a relationship between x and y. But if we revisit the original problem, and keep in mind the problem said x cubed plus y cubed minus 6xy is 0, but since I've established this relationship right here, everywhere I saw an x value, I can replace x with 1 half y squared. So I'm going to take 1 half y squared and cube it. I'm going to take 1 half y squared, let's see, and multiply it by y, and somehow that's going to be 0. Now, that may look like it's going to get really, really tough. And it turns out this problem is going to come together fairly well. I've got 1 eighth y to the sixth, be careful, plus y cubed minus 3y cubed would still be 0. A little bit of com combination of like terms here. Um, uh, personally, not at all. That looks like a weird 3, but it was just a cube. I just pick up for a second. I don't like this 1 8, so I'm going to multiply everybody by 8. I just like that better. And so in order to solve anything equal to 0, remember, we always factor. And the first step to factoring is greatest common factor. And these both have a y to the third. Um, we've been calling it uh, lowest powers, least powers. That's what I'm doing. As I took the lowest power of the two, and all of a sudden, I found out that what makes 0 happen is if y is 0, or if y equals the cube root of 16. Now, that looks like we're done. Yay, we finished the problem, but it didn't. So it says, it says find the coordinate of the point on the curve. That's not a coordinate. That's just the y value. But we have already established a relationship between x and y. So one of my coordinates happens when y is 0. But according to this, if I square the y value 0 and then cut it in half, I got 0, 0. And so 
we looked earlier in the video and zero, zero was in fact a place where, where it was both horizontal and vertical. Uh, but the other one is a little bit harder. If I plug in the cube root of 16 and I square it, then I'm going to get the cube root of 16 squared. And then it says we're supposed to cut that in half. Well, that looks terrible. That doesn't look like that could legitimately be an answer. But let's go ahead and see if it, in fact, is a legitimate answer. So the first thing is, back in Desmos, let's see, was 0, 0, in fact, one of those places? Well, we can see that it is. But the other one that's a little bit harder is we're going to take 16, and I'm going to raise it to the 2 thirds power, because keep in mind it was squared, but also cube rooted. So that's 2 thirds. And in front, we had a 1 half that was multiplying that idea. And that is supposed to be comma. So the x value is there. And then the y value is 16 to the 1 third power. And let's see what happened. And I think you can pretty clearly see that if we were to write x equals this number right here, you can see that is a vertical line that perfectly hits that spot. So that does look like we did our problem well. All right, that's the end of our review. And uh, let me know if there is anything else I can help with. I'll see you back in class. Bye-bye.